yeah, I mean, the challenging aspect of the program, basically it is extremely important that the, the, the level of work, um, you know, the, the, the time, the faculty that were involved in the program, they are very understanding, very flexible, and very accessible. So that helps tremendously in terms of, because I have, I, had a, I have a family, I had a family when I was studying. So being able to balance the two and for professors to understand, um, that was huge help in terms of dealing with the challenges. Well, when I was an undergraduate, I was studying public service studies and women's studies, and I started to do online research of opportunities that were up there. And I think that's how I first found out about the program for women in politics and public policy. Um, but I didn't apply for it right away. It was just something I kind of kept in mind, and I went out and I went to DC and worked in the field for a few years, but uh, knew it was something that I'd like to come back to and return to. Well, I think I, I really wanted a program that would be academically rigorous, um, but that would also have a real focus on applied policy analysis and you know, research. Um, so that was really important to me, and I was um, I was aware of a lot of the work of different faculty, like Randy Albelda and with me. Stone or Donnie Friedman, and so I sort of knew that they were modeling that practice of being, um, you know, sort of intellectual work with actual real world application. I was looking through uh, programs in international relations. Uh, I liked that this was a master's of science program as opposed to master's of arts, uh, and just with all the other connections, Boston being an international city. Uh, it was a great fit. But the program is really designed for working women, working professionals, and so many of us in the class were trying to juggle uh, work with nonprofits or political organizations, um, as well as volunteer work and you know community activism with the academic components of the program. And I think that the the coursework really helped to nourish and feed into the work we were doing in the community. It helped us spark interests in. Uh, new ways of applying what we were learning, and we were all supporting one another in, in striking that balance between our academics and our applied activism. I, I think I want to come the program to a different group of people. The first group is individuals who really want to be engaged in their community, um, people who want to make a difference in their, in their community. So, and, and as well as people who are curious about the, the policy making process and how it affects individual people's life. Um, so this is the people who wants to be engaged and or people who wants to be agents of change. Those are the people I work with this program. Um, I was uh, a part-time student, um, and, which is great to have the opportunity. It's, there aren't many doctoral programs where you can be a part-time student. So I was a part-time student and I was working full-time. And so it, just in terms of number of hours, it was really challenging. But what I found was that rather than feeling like I had competing commitments, um, I actually found a great deal of synergy between what I was learning in my courses and what I was doing in my sort of day to day work. And so I think for me, the two really fed off of each other and maybe minimized what might have felt really burdensome. I was actually in an undergraduate course um, in Worcester. I went to Holy Cross as an undergraduate. And I don't even remember what the topic of the class was, but I do know that somewhere in my notes from that day says gerontology PhD program and lots of different stars around it. And uh, it was the first I had ever thought of, of taking um, that course. I thought I'd go to law school, but this was just a completely different area for me, and it was a wonderful area for me. I always talk quite a bit with professors. Uh, I did it my undergrad also. Uh, I, I use office hours quite a bit, and uh, the professors here at UMass, I thought were great. Um, I all, I'm also talking about, uh, would talk with them about uh, things outside of the coursework, uh, papers, conferences, presentations, things like that. And I found that that was probably one of my uh, most rewarding parts of being here, was being able to always uh, have, have a professor that's uh, willing, uh, willing to talk to. Faculty have been uh, extremely engaging and very available to all of us. Uh, I think one of the best aspects of the program for me is the community of support that's built amongst the women within the program and also outside of the classroom in building relationships with faculty and staff who um, are very eager to help connect us to events and opportunities and contacts and networking uh, that will help us carry forth what we've learned this year into our lives 
in the future. So they've been very generous with their time and uh, very supportive of all of our varied interests. I had a terrific relationship with, um, with faculty and the staff um, all the way through from the very beginning of being a part-time student and um, really needing to sort of navigate that process as well as um, getting professional you know, guidance from faculty um, to getting feedback on my, you know, my academic work or my, um, I've completed my dissertation, getting substantive feed, uh, feedback from faculty members um, on, um, on the work itself um, as well as, uh, you know, where to go professionally next. The McCormick School, um, being part of University of Massachusetts, Boston, um, being a public urban uh, education institution, I think it's great because you're working with people A, that are practitioners, but B, that aren't necessarily, you don't have legacy students, uh, you have people that have a, a deep drive, desire, passion uh, to work in the field, uh, and that had to kind of fight and work their way to get here. So for me, the people uh, that, that are trying to get into the field, but weren't given a, a, a free ride, really, to get to it, those are the people I think that uh, the UMass uh, Boston's program it's great for, um, and for me, I think that it, uh, it makes the program so unique. Um, I'd say the most challenging is um, really focusing on so many different areas of aging. Um, and so we had, we were a policy-based program, but we had um, the stats, the statistics, the quantitative and the qualitative. We had the policy studies, um, sociology, economics, um, psychology. It was really great in that I really feel well prepared to tackle aging from any kind of broad number of um, areas. And yet at the same time, sometimes it was, um, it was challenging to be able to think, okay, well, I'm not doing sociology right now. I've got to bring this from an economics point of view. Um, and so even though it was, it was challenging in that sense, I think it uh, prepared us really well for what we were doing later. I think any woman who is interested in change would be uh, really well suited for this program, whether she's trying to make changes in her own life by learning new skills or exploring a new field or uh, really focused on social change, making change in society. I think that's a very uh, strong theme within the program and what's been amazing in our cohort is the many different experiences and backgrounds um, stages of life people are coming from. So I think it's a program that's really welcoming to people in a lot of different situations, whether they've been working in the field, whether they're um, just finishing college. Um, we have many women in the program who have been doing this for several decades and are coming back to school. Others who are exploring uh, pathways to continued graduate studies. So I think the program really uh, is well suited to benefit a lot of different women.